Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Sarah Mannell. It was another successful Independence Day in the town of Barnstable. You may have noticed some extra traffic over the holiday weekend. The beautiful weather and holiday activities were a huge draw for tourists this year. For Police Chief Paul McDonald, the busy holiday meant all hands on deck. We have five um, parades in town of Barnstable. Three of them are relatively major, per major parades. Then, of course, we have the fireworks on July 4th. So that particular day, we're extremely busy and it continues continue throughout the entire uh, weekend. Uh, we answered uh, over 800 calls for service during that four-day period. Uh, but however, we have to report there were no major incidents to report. Um, there were a number of arrests made. We arrested over 55 individuals, but most of them for minor offenses, most of them regarding some type of alcohol-related incidents, uh, something to do with the bars at nighttime and closing. And there were numerous calls, of course, regarding the fireworks and loud parties throughout the entire town. McDonald said compared to other holiday weekends, the number of calls were up slightly. Well, the call volume certainly had increased, but the level of, uh, of, of seriousness of the crimes was down considerably. Most of them were just, uh, you know, people come down here. A lot of times when people on vacations, they, they leave their manners back home and they come down here and they just come down and have a good time. And, and sometimes uh, that, that, that runs counterproductive to what we want to do. McDonald stressed that residents and visitors alike should plan for increased summer traffic and busy parking and parking lots. It's, it's going to be a beautiful summer, and with the people down here, they just have to please, you know, bring their manners with them, and everybody's down here to enjoy themselves and be patient. You know, we can only handle so many people, so many motor vehicles in this town, so just everybody just be patient, and everybody will have a good time. State lawmakers and Governor Deval Patrick appear to be at an impasse. The governor rejected the transportation bill approved by the House and Senate. Senator Dan Wolf explains. We sent the governor a transportation bill that essentially increases revenue both from the general budget and through new revenues, about $800 million a year, to pay for transportation infrastructure and to cover some shortfalls that are out there. Um, the twist is that the revenue from tolls which are scheduled to go away when the bonds are paid off in 2017, um, that revenue would stop. That's about $130 million a year. And what the governor has said is that the $800 million that, that, that he really needed as a minimum uh, to, to fund a lot of the transportation initiatives going forward, um, since it goes down to $670 million in, in four years, does not really consider that to be a revenue stream of $800 million to really do some of these projects that they're talking about funding. So he's sending the bill back to us saying, look, if the tolls are not extended in 2017, uh, then we need to do a $0.04 uh, additional gas tax starting in 2017, uh, in addition to the $0.03 cents that were just passed. And he's asking us to build that into the bill before he signs. According to Senator Wolf, working out those differences will not be an easy task. Back. So likely what's going to happen is we're not going to approve his amendment and simply send the bill back to him that we already sent to him. Then he has 10 days in which to either veto it or sign it. And it's sort of the ball is going back and forth. The ball's in our court when he sends it back to us. If we don't approve his change but just send it back to him, he then has the option of signing it as is or vetoing it. And he's indicated that he's, he will veto it. So then if he vetoes it, it would come back to us. We would then need a two-thirds majority vote to override his veto. And I think that would be close. I think on the House, they would probably uh, not be able to override his veto. And I think, it, well, it's actually in the, in the House, I think they would override his veto. In the Senate, it's going to be very, very close. Wolf says the House and Senate will take up the transportation bill again next week. The Town of Barnstable Growth Management Department is keeping climate change in the spotlight. The department is working with Wacoit Bay Estuarine Research Reserve, MIT, and the Consensus Building Institute to learn how to better communicate with residents about climate change issues. Director of Growth Management Joanne miller Buntick chatted with Barnstable Today's Melissa Chartrand about the project. And four uh, communities in New England are involved with this project with MIT, one in Rhode Island, one in Massachusetts, which is uh, Barnstable, uh, one in New Hampshire, and one in Maine. And they are testing 
uh, community engagement tools and communication tools. So uh, we agreed to become a participating community. We will get some really concrete products out of it, which is some very sophisticated mapping, uh, uh, using the best scientific evidence about what could be the impacts of climate change uh, in Barnstable. And uh, we are agreeing to get together some stakeholders okay. to work with MIT and the Consensus Building Institute to participate in these um, strategy testing and and the strategy that they're testing is actually a role play and so you can imagine we have a little skepticism about role sure. playing um, but we had our first event on June 18th and there was about 20 participants and everybody who participated had a great time they really enjoyed it they felt they learned a lot they felt they contributed a lot and our partners really got what they needed out of it Buntage is looking for residents who may want to help out with two future the sessions. The first uh, meeting there, we had, um, for example, the chair of our Board of Health. We had our DPW director. We had some of our economic development staff from growth management there. Um, the climate specialist from the Cape Cod Commission was there. And I'm going to... I can't, I can't, I'm going through the list in my mind, but my favorite, I think, uh, example was that the director of public works, uh, his role was to be the realtor in this okay. fictional town of Shoreham. And uh, our economic development specialist was the environmental agency advocate. So it was, you know, it was really a, a testing of expanding your, your vision, and everybody did a great job and enjoyed doing it. So we're organizing another one. Okay because our commitment to MIT is, involves a certain number of people to participate in this. So um, for their study purposes, they need that quantum. Uh, and it's going to be August 5th. Okay. And we're holding it here at Town Hall, actually in the hearing room. There's going to be one session from 1 to 4 in the afternoon. Uh, August 5th is a Monday. And one session from 5 to 8 in the afternoon. So we're hoping that, you know, people will participate. Anybody who's seeing this who would like to participate should contact me, joanne.buntage at town.barnsville.ma.us, and let me know if you're interested to participate. We're also sending out invitations to uh, other organizations, civic groups, uh, board members, um, and uh, people who've attended uh, conferences and workshops through uh, various organizations on the Cape to get some participants. Contact Joanne Miller Buntich if you want to participate in the study. The Conservation Commission will meet tonight in the hearing room in Town Hall. The meeting begins at 630. On the agenda again are plans to fortify Dead Neck using dredge spoils from Sampson's Island. Three Bays Preservation and the Mass Audubon Society would like to dredge to remove the westernmost 800 feet of Sampson's Island and use the spoils to fortify the eroding beach at Dead Neck. You can watch the Conservation Commission meeting live right here on Channel 18. Again, that meeting begins at 6.30 this evening. With Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.